So our daily and weekly charts, bullish and bearish breaks. This will be for Monday the 23rd of April. Take a look at the markets here. Uh, last video I did was on Wednesday night at the close of this bar right here. And I mentioned we may go up some more, but I thought we were going back to revisit the 50-day. Well, it happened the next day. We did revisit the 50-day. We closed slightly above it. And we didn't just gap down and then hit it hard and come right off of it. We actually grinded our way into that, tested it for hours in the middle of the day, and then finally uh, did close slightly above it. And then yesterday... On Friday, we lost it and lost it pretty significantly and went down. And this is a trend line off the daily chart of the most recent uh, since the lowest low we had here in this bounce. And we tested that trend line multiple times on Friday. It did close slightly above it. We need to stay above this trend line. Uh, we'll probably end up. You know, maybe we just had all this because it was the Friday jitters. I don't know. Definitely because we lost the 50 days, a big deal. Hopefully on Monday we gap above the 50 day and it becomes support again. If we can stay in this little spot here and hold this line, maybe we can push our way back through the 50 day by the end of the day. If we gap down below this line, this line, and then the 50-day as we progress is going to be our resistance, and we may be going lower. Just a look at the SPY looks just like it. Here's your look at the Dow. Uh, this was the peaks of the Dow. I'd like to see us hold this trend line. That would be helpful. Uh, we got so few components in the Dow, so I don't put a lot of uh, salt in that, but there it is for what it's worth. One of the things that concerns me is one of my future charts. I'm going to show this advanced decline line first. This was Thursday when we went out and we tested the 50 day and we kept chopping. This is my big time frame. This is normally one move or two all day. And it was a little choppy that day, which was a little uncharacteristic of this particular indicator. And then this was Friday, a total chop fest all day long, computer driven mostly, I'm sure. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Really, really hard to get a bearing on anything. You just had to pick and choose a few charts that were making moves on their own. And I'm not... Uh, you know, this is just indecision. So that's where we're at right now. This is my biggest futures chart that I track. It hadn't even pulled all the way back to here yet, uh, which is very likely that maybe it does, especially on this. This is my intermediate chart. Been in this uptrend, and it's now crossed below my level. And many times when I get this on stock charts, We'll revisit this level and then go in. It'll 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 turn it red. Right now it's signifying 26.56.50. That could actually tick up a little bit, maybe to uh, 57 as it comes. If it goes back up here and heads back down, this may intersect as we hit the 50 day on the S&P or in that area. And if it does and then it turns back down and takes out this number or one slightly higher, we could actually go into a little sell-off, which may take us back down to here to intersect this level. Now, this is rising, so it may be in the 26.55 area by then, but we may get a little more pullback. And most of this is just be cautious before you jump in a swing trade and let this figure this system out again. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel while you're here. Follow us on Twitter at Day Trader Setups and on Stock Twitch as well at Day Trader Setups. And you'll see this red subscribe button nine minutes from the end of the video. From that point on is a tutorial that explains the recap grids and some about our chart. So when we show a chart, you'll understand what we're talking about. 
Other than that, if you understand it all, you don't need to watch the last nine minutes. Take a look at our weekly bear and bull breaks. This ended up being your weekly bears. And uh, a lot of these just came in on Friday. See if any of them follow through on the uh, first of this coming week. Pretty big list. A lot of them actually, uh, like SWK, that was off an of earnings. O'Reilly continues to get weaker and weaker. Your daily bear breaks for Friday. That's your list there. And a lot of these just may be momentum and not breaking consolidation. Consolidation is what we really look for here. This would be more continuation. And we did lose like a key area here. That's an old support area and it kind of lost that area. It needs to get back above that. That's not good. So these are the kind of things you want to be looking for on these lists. If you got a good consolidation and then a break, uh, you know, maybe more to it on an individual basis. Your weekly bull breaks, there were a few. Uh, a lot of them had red days on Friday. I believe this was our earnings or either uh, some chatter on this particular symbol. And this was our daily bulls on Friday. We actually had some bull breaks uh, with that down day. These were some pretty strong stocks. Uh, Honeywell was, I know, was earnings. We got earnings coming up in a few days on this particular one. DFS, I think that's Discover. Uh, WAB, this thing did a crazy move late Friday afternoon just suddenly breaks for a five or six dollar move there. So I know that threw some volatility into some option prices. But you did have bull breaks in a weak market. Strong stock in a weak market is a pretty strong stock. So those might be worth paying attention to next week if you're looking for long. See what they do. See what the market does. Of course, the market heads up. These were already strong. That's a good sign for those. We already looked at the weekly bears and then look at the daily bears. This was your daily bears from Friday. Uh, this stock's been real weak anyway and just continues a little more downside. It has got a support level here that it is uh, testing. That number is $71.93. And you got about a 50% retracement, it looks like, uh, coming in here from the bigger the bigger bottom down here back to here. IBM continued down. Some energy stocks started to pull back. A lot of retail weakness the last couple of days. And then a lot of them just driven with what's going on in the market. URI did have earnings a few days ago and uh, sold off. I thought they had pretty good earnings, but it just goes to show you it really doesn't matter sometimes on the earnings trade to chart. And we'll look at those recaps. This video is being brought to you by STS Pivot System Charting Package for day traders, swing traders, and option traders. Easy to follow charts and scanners, trigger prices right on the charts on the setups. We teach two trades long and two trades short. That's all. It's that simple. Just like you see on this chart, the trigger price for this trade was in the corner over here from this point on with this price posted not to take it up here and it did not trigger, but it wasn't posted as a trigger anyway. Came back. This is a classic, beautiful setup. Breaks right here. 167.26 was our trigger price. We develop these same lines where you can overlay them on your shorter term charts. This is a two minute. By not taking that trade early when it went up here to 167.11, you avoided this 30 something minute pause here. It's not quite 30, about 15 minutes. This is a 60 something cent pullback by waiting on our trigger price to get in the trade here. And we were predicting that trigger price. This didn't go green until this happened. 
you have that up arrow where we're showing the price to go long at and as soon as it triggers it immediately gives a go short because it's so close to flipping back over so that's exactly where it occurred was right here and that is how simple that package is to use trigger prices right on your charts got a seven day free trial offer 10 day money back guarantee once you get this set up it's 69 dollars a month and we're extending as a courtesy if you take this package full access to the website including the trade room if you want to come in and out of there as well it's not part of the charting package but it's an offer we're letting you come in if you want to and i mentioned this in a video about a week ago that we were going to do this any previous member to day trader setups from day one ever paid a dollar to us this 69 dollar fee is waived you can come in and try the seven day trial no outlay of cash whatsoever if you decide you want to go with this package then you can sign up these were what we just looked at over in the left hand column this was friday so bears this was the prior day bears and most of those continued down we had clorox the day before down 428 dollar 65 dollar 8 dollar 93 three dollars these were stocks that showed up the day before in the bear list and continued down on Friday. The day before that, we didn't really have a one, and it's holding its own. The day before that, we had only one, and it actually had a green day. And five days ago, we had these two stock, these three stocks, and uh, ACI is actually kind of. I know it's got a lot of issues, but it's kind of looking not too bad on the daily right here I don't think it goes very far but if it gets a little move here it could be a three to four dollar move maybe not in one day and then it probably heads back down again it probably retest these lows again I would think there's your bears and we'll look at the bulls we've got a lot bigger list on the bulls now they didn't do too hot the last two days obviously but the ones that did are obviously pretty strong this was our bull breaks from Thursday even when we were testing the uh, 50 day there these did can some of these continued up on Friday uh, some of them very very small amount, but they held their own pretty well. This stock's actually making uh, new highs. I think this company's got a lot of good things going on. I've seen uh, that Karen Finnerman lady. She called this thing a long way back here, and uh, it's continued up very well, or maybe even back here. She sticks with the stock. She's a value investor, and she actually was talking about this stock a couple of days ago again. cruise line I think that's Norwegian some of those had earnings this past week I don't know if they did or not but a few of these still kind of holding their own uh, on the bull zone and if we have an up day on Friday they may continue on up they obviously rested uh, APC still pretty strong holding this on up here a lot of the uh, I noticed a lot of the energy stuff some of it pulled back a little bit get a good look at the rest of this list here Still a few in the bull zone, uh, resting, so to speak, on Friday. So those will still be stocks to pay attention to, especially if they got the yellow, green, and the check mark. We'll look at the ones a little further down here from three and four days ago. I don't see a lot of strength in that list. That don't mean they don't come back up if the market starts to come back up. Apple brutal all the way down tested the 200 day on Friday and did close slightly above it if I'm not mistaken this is very old a little note I had on some things I was testing actually uh, 
right on the 200 day. 165.52, low a day was 43, and it did hold it. We had this in the bear zone uh, four days ago. Of course, anybody could see that. Nothing special about figuring that one out. Oh, excuse me, bulls, bull zone. It was in the bull zone up here four days ago and then failed on the news there. Give you a good look at this entire list here if we can. If you're still holding up strong, VMware still grinding along up here, holding its own. Uh, whether it can stay or not, I don't know. With the market like it is, it's had a pretty good run up here. Wind's holding up pretty well up there. Get you a look at the rest of this list in this column. Most of these are not still maintaining the bull zone. This stock's still holding up pretty well right here, but <clears throat> much more of this, so it's going to try to do a little pullback, it looks like. And that's a complete look at all the recaps. And thanks for watching our video. See you next week. Be careful. Be sure to subscribe to our channel while you're here. And follow us on Twitter. And follow us on Stock Switch. And go over to daytradersetups.com. Click on Ninja 8 Charting. And you can learn more about our STS Pivot System charting package. Thanks for watching. This is a tutorial on our recap sheet. What you will see here is this column here is the weekly list. It's at the beginning on the weekly bear and bull breaks, the daily bull breaks and bears, depending on which one we're looking at. And then you will have five days following. First day, second, third, fourth, fifth. So what's here today will be here tomorrow. We'll shift over to here, then to here, then to here. So you got five days you can go back and look. The price here, you've got the bull zone trigger price, 36.80. This is the price of the profit since this alert. This is the net change on the stock for today. So tomorrow when this shifts over here, this number will be the same where we triggered it at. That number will stay in here for four days. The profit will be shown based on the current price of the stock in the day compared to this price on the alert. Like for instance on this stock, $3.48 profit from this break based on this close price up 92 cents today. This number is the profit at the high since we alerted it. It's the most profitable it's been. It got up to $4.27 profit. Pulled back, closed at $3.48. As you go on over like this stock here, SMTC, this was the break. This is the profit so far since the first day, $5.61 four days later, and at the peak it was $6.31 profit. That's what these columns mean. The next part you'll find is this yellow line it represents what I'm going to show you over here in just a moment, momentum. It can be on a bull or bear chart. And then trend stability, if it's green, it represents on the bulls and the bears will show a red line for trend stability. The last part you'll want to know about is these check marks. They represent the bull zone as it progresses higher. Could be the same as yesterday. Down here, this could be the bull zone that's gotten higher and higher and higher as this stock went along, and it means it's still maintaining the bull zone uh, levels, even the new ones that staying above them. This is what the bear grid looks like. Looks the very same. Got the weekly one day, two day, three day, four day, five day. So you got.
got a chance to see the stability of the trade. You know if it was up or down today after winning the Bears on the day before. The stability, the momentum, and the, the Bears on level with the check mark. In the video, we will take this page and we will slide these up and down so you have a chance to pause the video and see every single stock that's in the list. Then we'll move it up where you can see these items and you can pause the video and you, then you can see every single symbol in the list. You can go to your charts and look up what's going on. So that's what's in each one of these grids. The current day, day before, day before, day before, day before. So going back four days, you got your weekly there. And all this is right here is something I prepare for myself. I take this day, this day, and this day, combine them into this watch list every day, and that's what I carry forward over to my scanners. And just a quick part about what we mean by these levels changing. This is the bull zone level that the check mark represents the stock staying above, but the bull zone level when this stock broke out was way down here. This was the first breakout, and then as it recalculated our bull zone, that's what the green check mark means, is it's maintaining momentum. The yellow line represents this line that is our minimum mo momentum indicator used on down or up trades, and then our bull zone levels where it first broke out. And that's all these mean, trend stability, this is a line we use here, and we come in and we call it trend stability, and that's what this represents here. The, this line is solid green rather than dotted. It's something we look at on the lows of the day, not being low enough for us not to qualify for trend stability. So that's all these columns mean. So you'll be able to refer to the strength of the stock that is maintaining high enough lows to stay trend stable what the profit is if you're staying above the bull zone. That's how you'll use this. And that's your tutorial on the grids. This is a mini tutorial on what the lines mean on my charts if you're a first time viewer or been a while since you viewed. We're scanning on weekly and daily charts for my condition. When this green line is up is my bull zone red line is up is my bear zone. You need to be aware of support and resistance lines and act what charts do at levels and that's what these levels are for. Just quickly as I can do this and we're going to put a video on YouTube getting more from your swing trading charts that will be more detailed and look at more stocks how they react to these lines but the gist of what you see here this is what I'm scanning for and as you can see here this showed up in the bear zone it did go down for a few days but these green lines are support and that's why it fought for a few days tried to bounce back up headed back down again came right back into the bull zone a bear zone excuse me and continued on down now the lines here's what they represent a green line is a place that a stock went up to and rejected. So as this green line redrew itself every time we made highs right here and then it stayed across here for reference points continues the same line here for reference points. Resistance when you get above it becomes support. This green line was drawn way back in the history and when this stock broke above this resistance level when it came back down it held it it held it, it held it, it tested it and held it, held it again and again. That was support. That's why I want you to be aware of what these lines mean and you'll see them on my charts. And then the activity that stocks do, sometimes they go, that's my first target, that's my second target. Many times stocks go target one, pull back a little, target two, then they may pull all the way back to one and go again if we're continuing an uptrend. In this case, it did the pull back. This blue line is a 50 period moving average. This orange line is a 200. So that's what I want you to be aware of as well. And then I have a pivot system that consists of this blue line at the top, yellow line at the bottom, and my target one and target two. You'll see this particular day, this stock gap down, huge gap down, open way down here. 
the low on this stock was 169.68. I'm getting that right out of this box over here. And the value of that yellow line was 169.67. Within one cent, it held that line and bounced that day for a huge bounce. It's not a support level, but it's where I look for stocks to try to hold. It's where I look if I'm short, say from here, this is where I'm looking to get out. I'm looking to move two levels, target one, target two, going up, target one, target two. The pink lines all represent places the stock has gone down to and bounced. This pink line is referencing this last pivot low. So as you're selling down into it, it may bounce again. If you get below it, then it becomes resistance. And that's all these lines mean. I just want you to know what they mean going forward. Thanks for watching the video. Let's get started.